Hi, this is Raghav from uh, Sports Movement. Welcome to all of you uh, to Sports Movement's cricket tutorial. And today is the first of a series of tutorials that you're going to see on our YouTube page. Now, these cricket tutorials are aimed to give budding cricketers such as yourself some extra cricket knowledge, um, complementary to what you're learning out in you know, outdoors. So we're going to talk about various topics. Um, we will drill into the various rules of the game, the laws of the game, and we are also going to give you an opportunity to practice some uh, cricket drills at home. Um, so I'm really excited to get this started. Today's topic is going to be about players, where you learn about uh, players' responsibility, you will learn about what a captain is, uh, how a captain is appointed, etc. And the video component is going to be about batting stance. So in future classes, we will, we will drill into other topics and various other drills uh, relating to fielding, batting, bowling, etc. And we're going to try our best to make it super interesting to all of you there so that uh, you gain a lot of um, knowledge about the game. Now, are you ready to get this started? Because I really can't wait to get it started. So let's move on. Now we're going to start with something very, very basic. Number of players in a team. I'm sure most of you know that cricket's a game played between two teams. Two countries, two clubs, two school teams, for example. And uh, the number of players in each team is 11, isn't it? That's something simple, right? Now you see Team India on the top right, Team Australia on the bottom left. When India play against Australia, for example, you have 11 people from India and 11 people from Australia play the game on the field. Now, having said that, the question on the screen is, can a match be played with 14 players in each team? It turns out that yes, such a provision is there in the laws of the game. Now, you've probably not seen it before, but if you analyze closely, there are certain games, such as practice games, for example, before a big competition where uh, 14 players or 13 players are part of each team. This is to make sure that an opportunity is given to a lot of players before a big tournament, for example, so that every player is ready to play a game. But remember that only 11 players can field on the ground at any point of time. So this 11 is basically nine fielders plus a wicket keeper and uh, you know the bowler. So nowhere will you find 12 fielders or 13 fielders being on the field doing the fielding. So 14 players, yes, can be part of the team and all 14 can bat, but only 11 can field at any point of time. Now, isn't that interesting? How many of you honestly knew that before? Well, some time back, I also did not know it, but that's why we need to constantly learn about the game. I'm sure a lot of cricketers today might not know the answer to this question, but it's very important to keep ourselves updated with whatever is happening in this game. Anyway, let's move on. We're going to talk more about a team captain. Now, every team you know that plays cricket should appoint a captain to lead the team. You talk about India, then who's the captain? Virat Kohli. You talk about New Zealand, who's the captain? Kane Williamson, etc. Right? So every team should appoint a captain to lead the team. And a captain has a lot of important responsibilities towards his players and his team. Now you look at the photos here. You have on the top left uh, all the captains before the Cricket World Cup 2019 in UK. You can see uh, you can see nine different captains there or maybe not, or 10 different captains there. And on the bottom right, you can see uh, the Australian women's captain and the Indian women's captain, Meg Lanning and Harman Preet Kaur, uh, smiling for a photo taken before uh, this year's uh, recently concluded T20 World Cup that Australia beat India in the finals and won that trophy that you can see. So captain is a very important component of a team and has a lot of important responsibilities towards his players and towards his team. So let's move on to find out what a captain does for his team or for her team for that matter. The most important thing that a captain does is to create and implement plans and strategies to beat the other team. Now, what strategies are we talking about here? First one, for example, the captain arranges fielders in a proper way to save runs, take catches and to make runouts for that matter. The captain decides which bowler to bowl at what point. Sometimes a captain might think, okay, maybe I should bring a fast bowler. Sometimes he might think, no, maybe I should bring a leg spinner now. Or sometimes he might think, maybe I should bowl myself, right? So who makes all those calls? The captain does. 
also very important component of a captain's role is he talks to all his players and he motivates them to perform well. Now, all these are important roles that a captain plays. You see Kane Williamson here in the bottom picture, New Zealand captain, and Owen Morgan on the top picture, uh, England, England's um, one-day captain. So there are a lot of things that a captain has to think about and do in a game. So captain is a very, very important part of a team. Now, does this mean all the other players are not important? Definitely not. All players are equally important in a cricket team. Now, that's why cricket's a very, very fascinating sport. It is a complete team sport. The result of how a team performs does not depend on one individual. It depends on all 11 people on the field. In fact, it depends on people outside the field as well. For example, substitutes. For example, your coaches. For example, your, your doctors and your physical therapists to treat injuries for players, etc. So it's a complete team sport. And this is where a team sport uh, becomes different from an individual sport, for example. Right? Having said that, every player should do his or her best in every game and try to contribute to their team's victory. So every single player is equally important in a cricket team, not just the captain. But why do we appoint a captain? Now, we appoint a captain just to make sure that Things are easier in the middle and allow for proper communication within the team. Now, imagine a scenario where there is no captain. So who's going to change the field for you? Who's going to decide which bowler to bring in? Or who's going to decide what the strategy of the team is? If there is no captain, then there is no proper communication. Then there will be chaos in the field. Everyone is going to be talking. Everyone is going to keep thinking. Everyone is going to be doing something. So appointing a captain solves all these problems but remember that a captain is a mere representation of the team so the captain is no more important than his team members everyone is equally important that's what i want you to take from this so we spoke about a captain's role what is a player's role a player should play the game in a fair way all players should follow the rules of the game and they should never cheat to win so the rules are there for a reason, the laws are there for a reason, and all players should follow that sincerely. On top of that, all players should show respect towards the opposite team, towards the umpires, towards the coaches, etc. Right? On the field, players should give their 100% to make sure their team wins the game. They should do everything they can within the rules of the game to make sure that their team wins. But once the game is over, you should congratulate the opposite players. You should congratulate the other team. You should congratulate the umpires and the coaches, etc. And remember that cricket is, after all, just a game. We love the game. We want to do well. But let's not forget that it's just a game. And uh, we need to show respect to all those involved in the game. Now, that wraps up the theory part of uh, week one's tutorial. Now, as promised, we do have a video for you wherein um, it's a drill that I'm showing. Uh, if you click on the link that has just popped up in your video, it's called Batting Stunts. You click that, it will take you to a YouTube video um, wherein I'm showing you how to be in the best batting stance. So that um, uh, involves picking up the bat, holding the bat in the proper position, and uh, how far or close you should stand to the stumps, etc. So I want you to click that link I want you to listen and watch the video and I want you to practice that video a few times. Practice whatever I'm saying in that video a few times. Now once you practice that very well and once you're ready, ask someone to shoot a video of you doing the drill. So you basically do whatever I'm doing in that video. Ask somebody to shoot a video of, of you doing that and send it to us before the Wednesday of each week. Now once you do that, Every week, we will select one video to be posted on our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages. So if yours is the video that is selected, you can find yourself on the internet. Isn't that interesting? Now, just to wrap things up, uh, Sports Movement has a big presence in social media. We have our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages. Uh, these are our um, social media handles. So please go in and follow us, like us, subscribe to our channels. You have a lot of very good information such as videos, you have information about our upcoming programs, you have information about blogs that we write, about international cricket, um, about, about all cricket for that matter. So there's a lot of good information that, that you can find. 
So please go there and support us on social media. We would really like that. Now that wraps up uh, week one's tutorial. Um, just a basic start um, to our uh, to our week. Now next week we're going to have an, uh, another video coming up where we'll have other exciting drills and some more um, information about the rules and the laws of the game. So feel free to uh, send this link to your friends if they're interested to uh, learn more about the game and to practice some drills. And um, we'll be very, very happy to, uh, to uh, see how you've improved by following these tutorials. And um, so look forward to week two from us. And um, I can't wait to meet you again. See ya.